Hello all you cool cats and kittens, it's Carol Baskin, just kidding, what a do, skibbity boo, it's your boy, Shawnee B Gaming. Um, and before we get into the gameplay, I do just want to plug the channel for 30 seconds, fuck about 30 seconds every time. I love Smite, I enjoy playing Smite, and I love sharing my knowledge of Smite. So if that is something you enjoy, please subscribe to the channel, and there will be continuous stream of content, I release 6 to 7 videos a week. Um, if you want to see a particular god play, please leave a comment down below or reach out to me in the Discord server. Today we are going to be playing Anubis in Joust. Anubis is a very fun god. We'll dive into him just a little bit. Let's kind of go over our start. Um, so we put two points into our third ability, one point into our first ability. Um, and then we bought the tier 2 of Dan Croft's talent. Buying the tier 2 of Bancroft's talent is going to give us a decent amount of lifesteal, but it's going to allow us to have an early power curve whenever we get 1100 more gold and can finish Bancroft's talent. Um, so other than that, I don't think there's much more build wise we need to go over right now, so let's kind of go over Anubis and how he is played. His third ability, he places a circle damaging ability on the ground. Um, this is a great way to safely clear minions. Your one is a cone attack where you stand still and shoot laser beams out of your eyes. So, um, pretty good ability. Does a lot of damage. Unfortunately, they are able to get the first blood off of a Sobek plot. Um, and our first ability is the cone. The second ability is the wrap. The wrap will act as a stun. Um, so ideally, you want to put them into your 3, wrap them, and then use your ult or your 1 to secure the kill. Your ultimate is you stand still and you shoot a line attack with laser beams out of your eyes. So right there, uh, Kubikana was able to set me up. I was able to wrap and then confirm the kill with one of my abilities. Um, Anubis has zero mobility. So if gods are crashing on him, his only option is to return the damage and try to life steal the amount of damage that he's taking. There is no real running, there is some dodging, but if they really want you as Anubis, they're going to get you. Um, so right there, I ult, able to secure the kill. I am playing with my friend Preston Penn, he's playing as the Kumba. He's about to go down. We do have enough money for Bancroft's Talon, so we should be able to back. So I feel like I've laid out... Oh, and Anubis is passive. Um, he gets lifesteal. So, now that we've explained his kit and kind of the overall strategy of how to use him, we're going to be reviewing the gameplay and see how well I actually used him. So we just secured red, we have enough money, we should back and upgrade our item. Money that is not spent is not a lead established. You want to spend your money, get your items, and get your power spikes online. We're going to go ahead and hit blue buff. Anubis does go through a decent amount of mana in the early game. Won't really be a problem in the late game. We're going to grab this, make our way back to lane. Our ult is up in 9, and when it comes to leveling order, I think that there's two ways to level. Um, as you level up your 3, it increases its damage, and it's your safest ability, so I think you should always level your 3 first, but whenever it comes to the second ability that you level, your 1 does increase damage but it leaves you in such a vulnerable position where you're standing still and they can just throw a bunch of abilities on you it does increase your damage output um but if you level up your two it actually increases the duration that they are wrapped for so if you get a long wrap off you can get a long ult off unless they beat which is what they did right there and then Sobek actually helps me out by plucking me back into tower. So right now I am in a hold position waiting for my team to come back to lane. Just gonna clear up the wave with the three. 
And then we're gonna look to see if we can catch anybody in jungle. If they turn on us, we have to just throw our abilities down and try to blow them up. That's a Sobek ult, so that is down. That is very good. Um, if we get ulted by Dodgy and she connects, we always have our beats and our ultimate. So right now, I am on full cooldown. Dodgy can completely melt me or uh, dump her kit on me if she really wanted to. Luckily, Mulan was enough to back her off. It's in those moments when you're on full cooldown where you are a weak potato. You've got nothing until you have your abilities. We're gonna get the stun onto Isis. She actually silenced me out, which was a very good play. Um, I got a little caught off guard. Went in after I should have pulled out. I throw it down to three, turn and burn with the ultimate, turn and burn with the one. Unfortunately, I did not have enough damage and lifesteal to sustain that. That all that death started because I overcommitted on the Isis. As soon as she silenced my one, um, I should have maybe thrown one basic attack and then started to fall back. Whenever they did close on me towards the end of that life, um, I dumped all my abilities, threw out as much damage. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough for a kill. But hopefully as we get a few items online, that will change and I would actually win scenarios like that. So after we got Bancroft's talent, we are going to be going into the cooldown boots. 10% uh, cooldown is just a little bit more valuable in my mind than a little bit of extra power and life skill. We already have life skill, we're probably going to be going another life skill item. All in all, it's... 10% cooldown is super helpful. So we're gonna head over to our blue just to make sure that we keep getting XP. Um, I am a level eight, and uh, our team is a little under leveled, and then they are all seven. So I'm wanting to throw my stuff onto the Sobek, but I know Dodgy is hanging out in lane waiting to dash on me, so I save my stun for her, pop my beads to get out of it get out of the Solbeck ult, so that is two ults down. I throw my ability through the wall, see if that can do anything. Gonna ult, get the kill. Little weak, um, the meditation does help. I'm going to just dump the abilities and then try to burn the dodgy. So if Isis hits me with one of her abilities, I will probably die here, but I think we did enough to zone for Kumba. So we're going to see if we can catch them coming to lane. Um, we actually could have, but I... Oof, died again. I thought I only died once this game. That is unfortunate. Um, just played a little too aggressive. Was weak, even called out that I was going to die from one ability. And instead of wrapping her, I actually placed a ward. So there's a little bit of mistiming there. But that is okay. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, that this is a tier 5 Anubis skin. And that means that it changes as you level up through the game. Um, every 5 levels, you'll change forms until level 15. You'll reach your final form. So one more level, and we will evolve um, and then there's five types of skins um, from tier one all the way to tier five if that is something you guys are interested in learning more about please leave a comment down below and I could make a video about the different levels of skins and what makes a skin tier four versus tier three back to the game Mulan's ult is down That is a stun. That was a very late wrap on my part. Kumba committed a little bit too hard there. Um, important little note, Sobek is building Pestulence, so he does have some anti-heal online. But that was a nice little play. Sobek came in, we said, we can't really kill you, so we're not interested. And then we turned, wrapped, and burned the Isis. 
gonna clear up wave damage is open so we should be making a rotation over there you always want to be hitting these camps trying to maximize the amount of XP you can gain in the early game this will lead to a little bit of a lead and then hopefully you can snowball that into a bigger lead right now they have a lot of XP just off of the kills they have received clear up lane nice and safe so as you guys can notice I am now uh, a different Anubis compared to level 9 I've got some more horns coming out of me can't pick up mana because I have damage which is okay and then for our third item we are going to be going into Typhoon Fang I believe that is the item um, and what this is going to do is it's going to give us increased lifesteal and it's also going to convert our lifesteal percentage to power. Um, we are going to be able to go from like red health to full health off of one ability off one minion wave. That is kind of the plan. So right there Dodgy did a great bait. She was super weak, got everyone to run across the vision of their teammates. Oh, I can't believe I didn't get that. And then she ulted, pulling people in to the jungle. Luckily, I had my beads, or else I would have been in some trouble there. So, right there, she could have done some damage. All I had was my wrap, but she did not know that, so she kind of stayed off. So right now, we really just got to worry about the Isis damage. Um, the Sobek Pluck for Displacement, and then the Dodgy Burst if she were to jump on me. The Sobek's not bad, but luckily he's not targeting me too much. Um, I'm probably the easiest target on the team. So the fact that he's only plucked me once or twice is a good thing. We were going for the Isis right there. She saw it coming, was able to sidestep out of it. We're going to go ahead and back since I'm a little low on mana and I have enough for Typhon's Fang. Typhon, not Typhoon. Gotcha. And then after that, we are going to go into Divine Ruin. I think Anti-Heal is really strong this season across almost all game modes. Right now, looking at their team comp, they really only have the Sobek that has healing built into their kit. Um... We could assume that Isis is going to be building some lifesteal, and Dodgy doesn't really build lifesteal. Either way, the flat pen that you get from Divine Ruin um, is pretty helpful, and being able to apply the anti-heal is extremely helpful. So unfortunately I mistimed that with Kumbakarna. That is their two damaging ults down. Pretty big waste if you ask me. Going to get this Isis and then just melt her. That makes us 6 2 and 0. Oh. Gonna try to put the 3 in front of him, but he was smart, backed up, and then dashed to the left of it. Kumba did a good job stunning him in my 3, he's just very tanky. Um, we don't really have the items online to deal with a tanky character right now. Um, but we can blow up the squishier damage characters. So we're just going to steal this blue real quick. Back up, see if there's anything else we can take from camps. Isis does rotate over. Kumba lands a stun. I should be able to blow her up. Gonna make our way to our blue. Go ahead and maximize the amount of XP we are getting. There are waves meeting in the middle. But we should be able to just rotate under tower and collect most of that XP. I think we're missing one front minion, which is not that big of a deal since we hit two blue buffs and the side camp. Mulan is just frontlining for no reason. She 
gets blocked, she has to ult out. Throw my three onto the Isis, and somehow that gets the kill. Um, was not looking, so I didn't really get to see how much damage that was doing, but I don't feel like that should have 100 to 0 to Isis. Dodgy's hanging out. <laughs> that was a bad miss. We are going to try to turn and burn Dodgy, but she dashes out. If Dashy, if Dodgy is using her two on us, uh, our one should be able to out damage and out life steal the amount of damage we're receiving. So we're not really scared there. It's whenever she catches us when we don't have abilities that she really has the opportunity to burst us down. Other than that, we are just trying to life steal as much as possible, and aiming for Dodgy and Isis. So just to kind of reiterate the point because some people might notice that I'm not going the maximum damage in the leveling order of my abilities. In Joust, I find it, or at least once upon a time a while ago whenever I used to main Anubis, I came to the conclusion that a majority of my kill confirmation came from my ultimate. And that if I were to ult somebody who had only one point into the wrap, they would tend to get away and would miss a lot of the damage on my ult. But if I fully leveled up my two, the stun was long enough for me to get a majority of my damage off from my ultimate. And that would lead to a lot of kills. So, having that stored in the back of my brain, and that is why I leveled up my wrap second whether that is still the case in terms of the best way to play Anubis I haven't tried the other way but you usually aren't using your one in joust just because it leaves you in such a vulnerable position and the way the ult works on Anubis is it has a very high tick rate um, I forget the exact numbers but I think it takes like four times, if not more, a second. So you really want the target to be standing still, and then you're just lasering them with all the ticks. In an ideal world, that is. Right there, I get tagged by Dodgy's ult. I'm going to deed so she does not pull me in. Deed will remove that CC, the crowd control effect that was placed on me. Should be able to wrap this so back. Throw down the three, get some damage off, get some heals off. We do have the ult, so if I could wrap somebody. Um, the best combo to use the ult with would be to throw your three down, throw your two to connect the wrap to somebody while they're on your three, and then you use your ultimate. You could also wrap and then throw down your three, but then there will be like a half second while your three animation is being cast where they are CC'd. Um, so there's like a half second where they can get out of your three, whereas if you three and they're in it and then you wrap, you'll get the full duration of the wrap in damage form from the three. Got the wrap, melted, threw down the ult, so much lifesteal, dodgy on us doesn't matter. Um, accidentally jumped. So now we have hit level 15, we are in the final form for Anubis. I think the skin looks really cool, I think the character like endgame is just a little too bulky. I don't like the way he basically has. But other than that, I really like this skin. This was from an Odyssey event a couple years back. Um, I, I decided to participate because Anubis was my main god at the time. And I just felt like I had to get this Anubis skin. I mistimed a lot of abilities with Kumba Karna this game. I feel like he would ult every time I would throw my sash out or I'd throw my sash out right after he ulted every time. 
So that is something that I could definitely work on, especially since it's one of my friends, so I'll be able to just link up. Um, also, important note, Isis has left the game. I don't know if it's because we were bullying her too much or if it was connection issues. But we're going to be able to wrap up this game with our Anubis damage. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like down below. If you want to see a particular god played next, please leave a comment or join the Discord server. If you enjoyed this kind of content, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.